what a guy. Six days of going, are they ever going to float down out of the sky and stop fighting in an impossible <laughs> No, our better question is, are they ever going to throw a punch? All of a sudden, everything <laughs> stops. You're like, when do I make the impacts now? I don't know, somewhere. Oh, Japan. Sorry. Like, all of our characters have like, household items. It's <laughs> like, what are we going to do? What are we going to do? Uh, special. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, a lot of doctors were warning my parents when I was young that this, <laughs> this was a diagnosis like, and there wasn't much treatment available. It just came out with making voices. Hi! <laughs> um, I kind of did. Yeah. Basically. It was sort of a weird paradox, and it still is in my everyday world because basically at my heart I'm like <laughs> practically borderline autistic shy. So, bang! How do we get out of that? I'm going to make other people to live in my head with me. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, I mean, I goofed around with, you know, I, was, I don't for a what I used to get kicked out of school for. I remember being a little kid and it was, you know, watching shows and going like, doing, you know, being all embarrassed. But doing that. And I wasn't thinking about being an actor at that point. It was just because I was weird. Yeah. You know, I got people living in my head. I got to get them out. It wasn't until I, you know, sort of finished high school and stuff. <coughs> you know what? I, I, this is what I do. I wish there was a choice. <laughs> Dear God, if there was a choice, no sane person would do what I do. <laughs> do we have to go? Please don't. Yeah, we saw you sneak in, Mr. <laughs> sneaky itty person. It's all staring at him. Everybody turn. You pull up. Now give him a little one of these. I can't see it. I'm giving you one. It's the disappointed mom look. I'm sorry. <laughs> <laughs> I can't even be mad at you anymore. No, then I decided that was in fact what I wanted to do, and I went through four years, four years full time in <coughs> theatrical training to study my imps and my Shakespeare. <laughs> I know now that I was going to be a serious actor <coughs> of the stage. I actually got kicked out of theater school. Oh. For being too weird. Oh. And then told that I would never make it as an actor. Oh my god. Six million of these later, baby! <laughs> Said, but in a lot of regards, I'm probably the most successful person that's ever come out of that program. But you know, I also have done a lot of other training. You know, I continued after that, and all of it comes into play. Like people always think, you know, voice actors is about being a voice actor. You know, I did study dance, mime, boom. Because when we do characters in the studio, we're not standing, with the exception of Ian James Corlett, we're not standing there with our hands in our pockets, being brilliant. I don't know how he does it. It's just like, well, it's gold. You know, out. when you're doing a character, everything, you're doing a character like you're doing it on stage. Basically. You know, and when you're having freak out stuff between yourself, it's like people watching, they just go, wow. <laughs> you just keep, like, everything goes. I know. It changed because you got the one conduit, the one device into which whatever that magic thing is, and there's a string, <coughs> and it takes your characters and it puts them in a box. Some technology thing. Mm -hmm. You know, so you bring everything into a character. You know, you don't go, what would he sound like? I usually, I create the character first, and usually that's when the voice starts to fall into place. You know, I start with a picture always when I'm auditioning. If I'm looking at the picture, I sort of go, okay, you know, you know, what's the part? How does he feel? What is he? You know, what the ah, shit. Well, me, you know, I don't know. He looks like he's kind of standing like this, and bum, bum, and, you know, or to find really weird stuff, you've got to get really weird, and you just contort and misshape, and... You know, the face okay. goes and the eyes go, and then when it's ready to go, you unleash it, boom! Get him with the character cannon. Boom! <laughs> Take that, basically, 
too. <laughs> you know, it gets to the point, like, I'm scared of myself all the time. I've had to walk into the and all of a sudden, a fully developed character will just suddenly pop out. Can I say something? No. <laughs> no. no. I just think it's scary because that's exactly how I feel. Yeah. Like, I sometimes walk in the room and I'm like, I'm scared. Like, yeah. I don't even know what I'm thinking right now. Like, I, I have, like, three people in my brain. Me. Yeah. <laughs> 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 we just sit there and just go, like, ah. and, and, and I'm going, I don't know where that one came from. <laughs> it's not like, you know, you're not like going, oh, that's a cool voice. I mean, that's how you come up with others. always yeah. playing with it. And I'll go, like, oh, that sounded neat. But sometimes these, these totally developed beings just start Channel, you know, like, that wasn't me. I, I, I'm sorry, miss. That wasn't me. It's okay. It's okay. It's okay. It smells funky. You know, like what happens to a curtain that makes it smell funky? Let's not think about that. I love you, Scott. I love you too. You wait. You will be hearing from her. Just talking about me, not you. What are you talking about? Any other questions for Scott? Uh, let's see. We lost the guy. <laughs> we're, that's where uh, I'm playing with yeah. <laughs> <laughs> do you uh, do you ever get say uh, phone calls from telemarketers and decide to mess with them? I have been known to be <laughs> <laughs> sometimes, you know, in the sense of sometimes I'm just like, you know, fuck you, you die in hell. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah. Nah, I like to play. I don't do it as much as I used to. Mm -hmm. You know, when I'm working. Nah. The dumbest thing I ever did was for a while, you know, it was like doing interesting answering machine messages for myself. <laughs> and what you end up getting is coming home to 400 messages of <laughs> click. <laughs> 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 dude, dude, you got to check this out, man. Phone this number. Let's <laughs> <laughs> move Remember being with my ex-wife, we're stuck in the supermarket someplace, and it was just like way too crowded, way too busy, and I'm getting all claustrophobic. And she was overdoing something, and I just, I don't know if I can even get the voice now, but it's just standing there, there's all these people. I was just like, get out of my way! <laughs> So yeah, the long form, short form version is yes, I like it. <laughs> Scott. Welcome to the Scott meeting today. Scott, yeah, Scott, Scott. 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 It's our friend Scott. Yeah, Scott. Scott, 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 Scott. 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 Yeah. Scott. There's multiple. No, Scott, not Scott. Oh my god. Another asking question. Does that mean we all I'm sorry. In terms of car compartmentalization, when you've got to go in for a roar, just you've had just the worst weekend ever. What are the techniques you really use to really just empty yourself and go in as an empty canvas? Drugs and alcohol. <laughs> Besides the obvious. Besides the obvious. Yeah. Optimally, exactly 63.217% of a bottle of Grey Goose. It <laughs> just get you to that Zen state that people meditate oh, for years to achieve. <laughs> um, you know what? That's so crazy. I mean, that's a day to day, moment to moment, second to second. <laughs> Thing with me anyway is going okay just focus for long enough and what's weird is what's weird I was suddenly Christopher Walken <laughs> Walken dead <laughs> it is when I can st like some people really go in and it's a mental process right they're going you know analyze this character and building this thing and it's a very conscious effort and Okay, I find the best stuff I do is when I'm actually just kind of sitting outside watching, freaking myself up, going, where did that come from? And I often, I mean, it's a terrible thing to say to anybody that's an aspiring voice or a cartoon person, but some, the stuff that I've done that I'm 
proud of and characters where people have just gone nuts, you know, like Wasp Pinter and all the beast. I just walked in totally unprepared, going, I can't focus, I can't come up with anything, I can't think of this. And sometimes I get up to the mic and I open my mouth and there he is. <laughs> sometimes it's not, you know, when you have a lecture, sometimes I'm going like, as I'm doing a character, an audition, I'll be halfway through and stuff will start to change and I'll go, whoa, wait a minute, wait a minute. Okay, you know what, that would be cooler. Let me, okay. They're going, okay, give me another one. It's like, you know, all different takes. I, I tend to really create on the fly because it's just the only time that it's quiet enough to do it. Yeah. Other people come at it with a very structured, you know, they are, and, you know, if I was teaching right now, I would say, absolutely, this is how you go in. If you are going to go in for, you know, this is how it would work. There's a new prelay show coming in. Here's the characters available. The actors are allowed to pick three characters, three, four. Go in, prepared off your ass with two versions of what you think is good ideas. Because A, you do it, and if you have the luxury of being a bit of a bully and having done it for a while, they go, okay, that's great, we love that, and I go, okay, I got another idea as well, if we want to lay it down as an all. Nine times out of 10, they don't really know what they're waiting to hear until you go in and give it to them. So I've booked stuff, like they're so far off what they were asking for, but going, I got this idea. But the real practical purpose of that is a lot of times you go in and go, okay, this is what I think, and you do it, and four lines in, director just goes, casting director goes, yeah, um, what else you got? And if you stand there and go, I, I, I don't have, this is what I prepared, you know, it's basically like being undirectable, you know, you do this line, yeah. it's brilliant, they go, okay, try it this way, and you go, and you do it the same way every time, they go, it was a great read, but if you can't change on the fly, if you can't shift yeah. gears in the middle of the street, you're scrawled. And if you just go, I don't have anything else, they go, okay, well, thank you very much for coming here. Yeah. It's not even like a personal thing. But they go, okay, you know what, uh, and you know, we just what you did wasn't really what we were looking for. Mm -hmm. So if you can just suddenly slam them with another one, and they go, okay, that was cool, what else you got? It's like, uh, how about we do them like this? Bang! Yeah. They go, wow, you know, this person is clearly suffering from a debilitating mental illness. They're <laughs> <laughs> hired by us immediately. <laughs> so, so it's all paradox, right? It's like going in so prepared, to be completely unprepared. And you actually started the question with so sort of exactly the right way. Just kind of going, do all your work, get all your shit ready, and then just walk in the door and forget about everything that you've done. Yeah. It's you know, it's everything that I've ever taught in theater school. It's the easiest thing in the world on paper. But the trick is, and a lot of people don't get it, is you gotta do, you know, in my case I did twenty five years <coughs> of hard work yeah. before I ever walked into a studio and got to do you know, 10 minutes of having the best time of my life. Because then you got the tools there to do it with. You know, technically, just, you know, and in speaking, and I don't ever like to talk about creating voices as a voice actor, because I like to think of it as creating characters. But, you know, if you can do the kind of acrobatics that a lot of us can do, that's what makes you hireable, if you apply that to a character. And learning how to do that, I'm constantly finding new stuff. Like, I'll make a noise and suddenly go like, where did that come from? <laughs> But it's a gross noise inside my head. I'm going, I'm going to use that for something. And it's actually where my tonsil used to be. <laughs> so little things like that, because people, you know, people will ask, how do you come up with voices? So, uh, you know, the simplest example, you've got two voices. You got a low voice and a high voice. Well, you got two voices. That's awesome. You're suddenly going, like, you know, you know, like lateral lisp are always fun. You know, it's like a great face. Well now you don't got two voices, now you got four. You know, you watch this and it's like, oh, you know, that Manchester accent is fantastic. Like, oh, should I do that? I don't know I do that. Well, now you don't got four, you got eight. You know, 16, 32, and then you start combining. It becomes literally an infinite amount of things. So I have what I refer to as the toolbox. You know, on shows like DBZ and whatnot, I was already playing 12 characters, and then every episode they go, there's also like, you know, these 10, 13, 20 incidental characters, you're playing them all, there's no time, good, go. Beep, beep, beep and they can't sound like anything else. So you just whip into the toolbox and just go, handful of things, poof. You know, what comes out, who knows? But mathematically, it, it becomes almost infinite very quickly. You know, like I said, the two to four, six table, by the time you got six, you can start taking bits of those, and then you start combining them, and then you start creating other things. And you know, there's, there's eight notes in music, 12 technically. Yeah. But every bit of Western music is based on that. Twelve little notes. Yeah. How you put them together? 
You go in, it's like, well, you know, um, I'm going to play something that isn't me, so I'll take that. You remember that one person I you know, saw that had that thing? Of, you just start throwing it into the toolbox and dig around in the play pile and throw on stuff and go, okay, that was cool and interesting. Okay, that felt stupid and it's somehow wrong. <laughs> Ooh, that's nice. But that's who that uh -oh. You just start. Uh -oh. Uh -oh. <laughs> <laughs> thank you, thank you, thank you, thank you. Mary. Thank you, thank you, thank you. I hope it's bright. It's green. Soil and green is people. <laughs> <laughs> what? Or as we said on reboot once, soil and green is Enzo. <laughs> uh, yeah. uh, okay, that's hot. I'm gonna drink that soon. I'll be quiet. <laughs> that's just about what will be done. Then I'll be going, okay, I've got the rest of the day ahead of me now. Woo! Sugar and caffeine. Two so things I don't normally do. Yes. Right. Not me. Uh, Kate Smash, yeah, we'll go with Pikachu, then we'll come forward. And we'll okay. okay, just wondering, but do you also play Ace the Bad Hound from Crypto, the Duke Super Dog show? The Dark Paw of Justice. Yes. <laughs> I thought that. I was also Ignatius, the lizard. <laughs> you know, that right there, I was like, there was a little Charles Nelson Riley, a little bit of Paul Lind in there, some bum bum bum, some fur, you know. So that, I just broke that down into about 20 different components in one character. You know, the laugh came from here, the thing. I start with a laugh a lot of times, too. Especially when I'm starting, that's what I do. It's like, what would the characters laugh at? Once you get the laugh, boom. Then the character just starts coming at you. It's going to sound like a bad burrito. <laughs> <laughs> uh, this, is it? Someone just turned the level down. We don't need no stinking technology. <laughs> <laughs> we are professionals. <laughs> yeah, we know we we're play doing. them away <laughs> with the majesty of our voices. <laughs> <laughs> we know what we're doing. Things. Uh, as you put a mic in my hand, all of a sudden I feel like I'm doing stand-up. Yeah. <laughs> like, hey, good-looking crowd. Anyone from out of town here? Yeah. Who wants to deal with that airline food, huh? Make it stop, make it stop. Make it I stop. Got a girlfriend, that was a drag. We got along great, but I'm a comic. I needed the material. <laughs> hey. I need comics. <laughs> <laughs> what was the question? <laughs> yes. My question is, what book do you think would make a good anime, and which character would you want to play? I want to play all of the characters. No, 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 you can't say that. You got to pick one. No. <laughs> no. <laughs> That's <laughs> true. <laughs> 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 so no, no, I hate no, 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 for no, shows no, because they know that I'm going to go in there and read for every single character. Okay. <laughs> I read, and I've ended up playing girls because my theory is the more spaghetti you throw at that wall, <laughs> <laughs> the more chance. They're going to stick. They're going to go like, you're not scheduling me after McNeil, man. He's in there for an hour. That was a little old days. What about the first part of my question, then? Uh, which, which book would make a great Good anime, yes. <laughs> you made it a thing. You know what, honestly, okay, because I mean, all the books that I am a huge, like, I'm a huge Terry Pratchett fan. <laughs> <laughs> this world would be great as an animated series because I've seen a couple of the movies they did, and it's like with anything like that. Like you know, I watched Lord of the Rings, and I'm like, and I thought they were great actually. But I've read those books 20 times since I was a kid. I know in my head what every character looks like, so nobody is ever going to get it the way every because everybody sees it differently. So and you know, my brother was like, as an actual anime. Culturally, it may not work, you know, because he's sort of putting a, a Japanese interpreted maybe interesting as hell, you know. So it's like, do the experiment, find out. Let's take that book, you know. We we'll do it as a live action. We we'll do it as a, what you know, traditional cartoon or animated version. Do it as an anime. They did it with Wolverine the anime. Yeah, yeah, tall, skinny Wolverine. <laughs> Go figure. <laughs> yeah, but that's very Canadian. Come on, they're getting it right. We're compounding. Hugh Jackman's too tall to be Wolverine. So, yeah, blast you and your intelligent questions. But I've done that. I've done that. I think all books that go should be done. because. But then I'm also like, yeah, but you know what? It's a book. 
can I read it instead? <laughs> I like to read. Because then I, I, like I, I can make the character movie in my head. Because mm -hmm. yeah. I don't have to see how someone else reads the book. I want to see how I read the book. Okay, this is on a less serious note. I heard you say this on a panel before, and I have to hear it again. Piccolo, the balls are inert. Uh, <laughs> the one he doesn't understand. I understand. Oh, no worries. <laughs> I'm actually really dumb. Doctor, I got a problem. <laughs> the balls are inert. <laughs> to the ring in opening ceremonies. People named Michaels, it seems to work. Last night got an Ebor, so I drunk to her and school. Hey, you Brad Michaels! Hey, Brad Michaels! Say something Brad Michaels likes! <laughs> <laughs> when I started doing it, we recorded at a place called Little Mountain Sound in Vancouver, and that was late 80s, and that's where every sort of hard rock pop album that was huge was recorded. My very first day ever doing cartoons, New Adventures of He-Man, I'm so excited. I booked 65 episodes of this thing. I'm no longer an unemployed actor. Oh my God, this is great. We'll open up the door. Bam! Ran into Steven Tyler from Aerosmith. That's great. <laughs> We'd hang. It was just like, you know, they were all there. It was cool. C.C. DeVille from Poison actually ended up becoming a character on G.I. Joe, which we were doing at the time, because he's just so nuts, and the writers went, why don't we just make him a character? <laughs> we'll give him an episode of G.I. Joe, and it's like, away we went. <laughs> um, is that anything like an answer? <laughs> well, it wasn't a question. Oh, okay. good. I don't think I remember the question. It's not easy having two wives. Well, keep it busy. You're all my favorite, so I want to get to all of you. Yes. Okay, uh, well, it's kind of like a follow up on her question. Her question. Well, um, I, I can tell that you and Vicky and Rihanna are kind of up there in the voice acting thing, so who do you think is better, you or Vicky and Rihanna? Oh, oh, very oh, oh, what kind of question are you asking right now? Uh, <laughs> so Scott McNeil Penn. I already know the answer. I'm just, I just want to know your question. Um, yeah. On a professional level. Okay, that's fair. Yeah, I don't want to turn this into slander and slag. <laughs> Boy. Uh -oh. But uh -oh. there's a difference between the kind of work we do, you know, in sort of, you know, the L.A., Vancouver. Yeah. And, and as far as... The, the, the kind of, I mean, this is no way, shape, or form a reflection on acting or ability, but to really say who's a voice actor, my definition tends to be, you know, I can rip out 434 different characters, and if I'm doing my job right, you're never going to know it's the same person. I had an engineer once go, Scott, yeah, you're the only guy, sometimes i got to look up and find out who it is. To me, that's my definition of... You know, it's like, as far as movie acting goes, you know, I, I like people, you know, I go like uh, Daniel Day-Lewis, something like that, where you go, I can't believe it's the same person. And then there are also people who are movie stars, who are great, you know, John Wayne was John Wayne in every film he ever did, including Genghis Khan. <laughs> <laughs> you better bring them yurts into a circle, they'll grow up. <laughs> <laughs> are coming over the hell. <laughs> um, you know, so I'm not even gonna answer that with the direct thing. I, pro I, I have a different, skill set than you know they may have plus as far as I know he's only ever done anime um, you know catch me on side I'll tell you the real truth yes he's a tricky well, like to call a vanity vessel <laughs> <laughs> anyway it's just not going any further well, he's done his own on my version of Short form version, I've been doing this a long time. And I started doing this long before it was about becoming a rock star. And I did this because it's what I do and it's my work. And I have done so much work. And not, it's all the same voice for everything all the time. 
They can see through. Just saying. Okay. Just saying. Oh! 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 Oh!
it's harder and harder to get work. Not only am I now going up against a couple of hundred people that are really good, yourself. but I'm also going up against myself every time. Mm -hmm. You know, you can't just go in and do the same things over and over and over again. Sometimes you do because that's just the way the character works. Let's face it, Piccolo and Wolverine were not a big stretch. <laughs> but, you know, you have to be the one that comes up with the most brilliant version of a character when they're auditioning. Because <clears throat> they're going to listen to 200 people and go like, okay, you know, we want the guy to be kind of just normal and this, that, this, the other thing. You've got to be the one that they go, wow. And that this much more applies to prelay stuff than anime. Anime, because of the nature of the thing, is a lot more about just going in and it's your voice and yourself as this character. Because it's less what I would refer to as cartoony. And that's a different skill set entirely. I'm not nearly as good at that. Like, I, you know, just use your own voice. What the hell does that sound like? <laughs> I have no idea. Yes? Yeah, can you do the, the scene from the s Supernatural? do the scene from Supernatural. I don't think they even left any dialogue. <laughs> no, I'm talking about, you know, when the, we, the part where we got the, the shotgun and I'm you try to shoot it. And and so like, okay. yeah. Fumble, fumble. <laughs> yeah, pretty much. I'm just sitting with my legs spread, the camera running by, and going, there's a huge asshole. <laughs> <laughs> right? Make that in Sharon Stone. <laughs> <laughs> the funniest thing about shooting that, it, we were shooting in the fall, and it was a horrible, horrible Vancouver day. Like it was stormy and pouring rain, and so of course the shooting that we shot that on in a sound studio, sound stage. So there's my trailer and shit. So this horrible day outside, we go inside to shoot because this is movies. We have to waste money. So we've got like rain machines and wind machines. You know, it's costing $25,000 a minute to recreate the weather that if I just stuck my head out the real door. <laughs> you know, so you leave in your trailer to come in and there's sick people with umbrellas making sure you see them. And there we go. And it's like, add action. And you're like, open the door and look out. It's like... <laughs> People going, why come you were grimacing? You were overacting. It's like, no, man, I had 400 mile an hour wind and cold yeah. and fake rain plastered in your face. <laughs> you go, this is such a dumb industry. <laughs> 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 I'm just the trailer outside. We could shot this in three minutes. <laughs> I said, well, we don't control that rain. That's not our rain. It's fake rain. That's not union rain. <laughs> 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 yeah. Fake from the con guy, what is your favorite flavor of cake? Lie. <laughs> the best flavor. I'm talking seriously. Pie cake? How awesome would that be? Yeah. Oh, yeah. Oh, I'm cake with the, the pie box. inside. Yes. Awesome. Brain, brain. I'm an apple pie dude. I love apple pie. Woo! Uh -oh, I hate pie. Combine. Doesn't like a beer. Because I like drinking pie, but I'm not much of a sweet tooth. Oh, this. No, I've already done you, so I'm coming over here. But I will get back. Yes. Out of all the roles that you've done, how many of them have been, like, singing roles? Quite a few, actually. I've been doing more and more that way. Uh, I just did a opening theme song for a, one of those I Can't Get Discuss It projects. Aww. It involves pirates, which is awesome. Oh. Uh, you know, it's another one of those skill sets, too. You know, when they go in, it's like, oh, by the way, this character has to be able to sing. I hope he can sing. You know, it ain't always the case that we're going to get another person to come in and sing. Uh, you know, I did a thing called Chinese Ghost Story. I did a uh -huh. big operatic, like, and also the, the little romantic love battle at the beginning, which I love. It's just another thing you have to be able to do when they say we need you to do this.